All right, so today we're going to be load testing the Solark 15K all-in-one hybrid solar inverter here um, that I have on my house. Now, before I get into that, I want to tell you exactly how I have this thing wired up um, on my system here. Is it, Power comes from the meter, just like it would at yours. Uh, your electric meter up at the top of the street or wherever it's at or on the side of your house. And for me, it's at the top of my property. The power goes from that meter directly into this service disconnect here. I can pull this lever down and disconnects me from the grid completely. That's how we're going to be doing these, this testing today. So everything is off grid that you're going to be seeing that I'm going to be testing out. Basically it goes from the meter to this disconnect and then into my solar arc. From there it goes to feed my main panel inside my house where just like you have on your house, it has all the breakers and feeds all the equipment and outlets in your house. So the difference in this system and a lot of other solar systems you've probably seen is there's no critical loads panel. The, the power doesn't go from my meter to my home panel and then the solar arc takes power from here also and sends it directly to, in, to a smaller 40 amp breaker, for instance, inside my main panel. That's not how this works. The power comes directly from the meter into here to the solar arc and then loops out into my main panel at my house. So that means I can use any load I want on my house, even in off-grid mode. Now you got to manage your loads to make sure you don't overload this thing and I'll get into that more in this video. Now with this system, when the sun's out, I can power every load in my house, no problem at all. Uh, when the sun's not out, when there's a storm, or at night when I'm running off my battery bank right here alone, then I gotta watch what I'm doing because I could burn through this battery bank pretty quick if you're running like your whole house AC, or cooking with an induction cooktop or an electric cooktop or using your electric water heater and that type of thing. So um, keep that in mind. So when the Solar 15K is running, when it's basically the sun's out, it can take 15,000 watts, hence the 15K in the name of the actual unit. It can take that and it can distribute power from there to my loads, or it can send it also to my battery bank to charge my batteries. It can do either or. So when the sun's out, I can run 15,000 watts basically to my panel. But when the sun's not out and I'm going off the battery bank only, 12,000 watts is the max, or 6,000 watts on each leg. Uh, the Solar 15K does not do load balancing. So if you overload one of the 120 volt legs with more than 6,000 watts, it will trip this thing and go into an over current protection. Um, then it'll restart in like 30 seconds and just try to power all the loads again. Now, if you're interested in a whole home solar system like I have here that'll work when the grid's up or when the grid's down, doesn't matter, you'll have power to your house. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. It's actually solarpdfdownload.com. You can go there and download my whole system. It'll have the wiring diagram, every part and piece I use, a link to every part and piece I use for the install. So it should help give you a good idea how to begin the process of setting up your system. Now during this test, I'm going to leave my seven refrigerators that I have um, in my house and in my outdoor shop uh, running at all times. I'm also going to have my internet running at all times and some lights in the house. Um, so keep that in mind. Now at the end of this video, I am going to try and start my four ton traditional air conditioner, a whole house air conditioner that mostly you all have uh, in your house and see if you can start that thing without a soft start. So make sure you stay to the end of the video for that. So the first thing I'm going to test is running my 24 K BTU, Mr. Cool do it yourself mini split that I installed. Um, also my EG4 9,000 BTU uh, mini split that I recently installed for my master bedroom. And then I'm going to run also two different 5,000 BTU window air conditioning units in two of my spare bedrooms and we'll see how it performs. So as you can see here on my Solark 15K, my house is currently using just about one kilowatt of electricity to run my seven refrigerators and some lights. So let's go start uh, the mini splits now in the other window unit ACs and see what we jump up to and see if the solar can handle it. So before we do anything, let's go off grid with this sucker. So as you can see right now, it shows the grid. There's no yellow box around it, which means I do have uh, power if I need it from the grid as backup. Um, but I am going to hit my disconnect here, which is this lever. And maybe you saw a slight flicker in the lights. And now you see the yellow box around the grid there, which says you don't have a grid connection. All right, so let's go start those air conditionings. So here's the master bedroom 9000 BTU EG4 mini split. Just turned it on. All right, that thing is up and running. Let's see how much power that's pulling. All right, we went from a little less than one kilowatt to now 1.46. 
So that 9,000 uh, BTU EG4 unit is starting the compressor right now, and it's running on around, eh, let's call it 600 watts when that compressor's running. All right, let's start our 24K BTU mini split. All right, here we go, starting it up. All right, it is running. Let's go see how much power this one is pulling. All right, so we went from 1.6 kilowatts to 2.8 roughly, about 2.9. It's slowly creeping up as that compressor is rolling up. So let's see where it averages out at here. All right, looks like 3.34 kilowatts. And again, we're still off grid right now, so looking good. Things handling it like a champ. Now let's go start the other two window 5000 BTU units. All right, here's one of our guest bedroom 5000 BTU units. Turning that thing on. That thing is running. Let's go to the other guest bedroom and start up that one as well. All right, let's start this one up into high cool mode. There we go. Everything seems to be running great. Inverter's handling it with no problems. All right, and with all of those air conditioning units running, we are pulling, let's see, 4.32 kilowatts. So inverter's handling it just great. All right, now let's start up our heat pump water heater here. So I'll move that temperature up to 140 degrees, and then we'll see what that adds to our load here on the Solark 15K. All right, I've cranked this thing up to 140 degrees, so it has now started the compressor. And this is in heat pump only mode. That's the mode I run it in because it's more energy efficient. And you'll see now we're pulling 5.04 kilowatts. And again, that's that's less than half of what this thing is capable of running at 12,000 watts continuous off grid, or as many as the solar that I'm pushing through it now. So I'm pulling in 11.25 kilowatts of solar at the moment. So everything's running just fine. All right, let's go kick on the dishwasher now. All right, let's fire up the dishwasher here. Hit the start button. I'll wait until I hear it click on. So I can hear it starting to run water, but it's not started the motor yet to start washing. So I'll just leave that thing on because it's going to start cranking up more as the motor starts. You know, let's fire up a couple TVs now. And I also have my internet router. It's been running the whole time as well. All right, TV's running. I'll go fire up the uh, master bedroom TV as well. All right, let's fire up the master TV. All right. Two TVs running. The dishwasher is running now, the motor's going, so let's go check our kilowatt usage. All right, with all of that running, that's all the mini splits, the water heater, the dishwasher, um, let's see, lights, two TVs, internet router, I'm pushing 5.45 kilowatts. Oh, and I've got seven refrigerators running on this as well. So this thing's handling perfect off grid so far. All right, let's throw another, uh, let's throw a big load on it. I'm gonna put my induction cooktop on this thing right now. So I'll just start both burners and put some pans on it and we'll see a big uptick here in electricity usage. So we're starting at roughly 5.4 kilowatts. Let's see what happens. All right, we got two pans on the induction cooktop here. Let's start this thing up. All right, we'll put it on, let's call it medium high. That's 375 degrees and medium high on this side also, 375 degrees. Oh yeah, I have to hit the start button. That's right. There we go. I hear it fire up. It is running full bore now. Let's go see the energy usage now. All right, that kicked us up a bit. Now we're at 7.23 kilowatts. Still, inverter's handling it just fine with all of that running. That's pretty much my whole house of items running right now. So you know what, I'm gonna put my dryer on, which is electric, but I do have an energy efficient uh, heat pump washer dryer combo, the new GE one that just came out. So, but I'm gonna start that one up in dryer mode because in wash mode, it runs on like 200 watts. So it's like nothing. Uh, the heater at least uses more than that. So let's try that and see where we're at. All right, so here's the new GE washer dryer combo. I'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna put it on dry. Okay, fine, whatever, tank's empty, I don't care. 
All right, let's put it on dry only and more dry. Let's get this thing running. All right, start. All right, well, it's just starting to dry here. It just started spinning. You can kind of see the clothes in there. <laughs> but this thing's new, and I left the sticker on it. But as you can see, it's an estimate of $19 <laughs> a year to run this thing. It is so energy efficient. It's a washer-dryer combo. Um, so you just put your clothes in the wash, and it automatically cycles to dry right away. So it's a pretty neat, pretty neat little contraption. Um, but it's running now, so let's go see the energy usage. <laughs> it's still... It didn't even push it up that much at all now that it's drying. It's at 7.7 .7 kilowatts. So, uh, God, I'm running a lot of stuff right now. Um, and it is handling it just fine. All right, so we're at 7.54. I can't think of any more loads to run inside my house. So what I'm gonna do is just start backing off some of these loads and then let's go start my two horsepower well pump and see if this thing can handle it. That is a big surge, so we'll see what happens. All right, so I turned off a lot of the loads, like the stove top, um, the, I still have the dishwasher running, the heat pump, water heater running, and my big uh, 24K BTU mini split running, um, because I wanna basically try to start this well pump like I would be living my normal life here. So we're pulling 3.67 kilowatts. Let's go fire that well pump up and see what happens. All right, so here's the big test. The well pump's right here, and I just fired it up. Yep, I hear water dropping in. Let's go see the power usage. All right, so the power usage with the well pump running now is 5.66 kilowatts. So what's that, uh, 16, 17, about around 1,700 uh, watts that my well pump is pulling, and this thing handled the surge without a problem. And that well pump powers uh, five homes on this property and fills those big tanks that you saw in my video here a minute ago. And my well is 400 and roughly 60 feet deep and the well pump is at 440 feet, I believe. So this is pumping water from a long way down and this inverter is handling it like a champ. So I'm gonna shut that well pump off now and I'm going to try and start my four ton traditional AC unit. That will be the big test. Um, there's not a lot of inverters that can do that. So let's see if this thing can pull it off. So let me shut that well pump off and let's give it a shot. All right, so I turned off my 24K BTU mini split because I'm about to start the uh, big four ton traditional air conditioner. And there you go, we're at 1.64 kilowatts right now. I am gonna go fire it up right now. Let's see if it can handle starting that thing without a uh, soft start which is a really big test for this so here we go all right here we go yep started up all right let's go take a look yep started it up we're now at 5.7 kilowatts i hear the big forced air unit running i'll go outside and we'll check the ac unit make sure it's fully spinning but god it started that thing without a problem i mean i didn't even notice any lights dimming incredible Yep, she's running like a champ. Sounds perfect. Let's see if I can get the specs on this thing. So as you can see, this inverter powered every load that I could throw at it inside my house. Now I do have more energy efficient appliances. Um, I did that intentionally so I could run off grid at night and not use as much of my battery bank as most other people. Um, but I can't, I can't say enough good things about this inverter. The guys at Solark really knocked this one out of the park. Now I do have, sitting in the box right next to me here, the new 18 kPV inverter from EG4. That's the direct competitor to Solark. So I'm going to swap this one out, put that one in its place, and see if it performs just as well. So make sure you subscribe to this channel to get notified when I release that video. Also, as a reminder, if you want to do a system like this and you're looking for an idea of how to do it, the equipment type, all the pieces, I have a diagram, a PDF you can download. Just go to the website, solarpdfdownload.com. It's a free PDF to download, um, and that should get you off to a pretty good start. Um, anyways, that's it. See you in the next video.